How are you, Dan? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, you're with Dan, he's the product planner for the new, uh, brand new model for Mazda, right? Yes, brand new Mazda CX-3. CX yes, all new. So, um, this car is, uh, again, like in a, in a segment that is just exploding in the US. Yes, uh, it's really starting to explode right as, as we speak. So, what was the decision we had? I guess that, that's the decision why you brought it to the market, right? I mean, you want to compete. You're doing really well with everything else? Yes, everything else is really strong. We've had great success with the CX-5, uh, which is really uh, kind of from our CX standpoint, so this was a logical kind of next step as we move forward. We saw, especially with the downsizing in the marketplace, you know, exactly. 10 years ago, everybody was kind of going bigger, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get in with fuel economy, fuel prices start going higher, so uh, things start to come down. You saw that the, the midsize kind of became the small and, and the, the big CUVs kind of, it's, kind of went away it's, so it's and, and people are a lot more accepting of, of smaller vehicles so you know exactly you it's, it's, it's very funny when I, I saw the, the whole presentation this morning it's very interesting to see how um, we're getting more like a European designing cars and sizes also yes here yes. in the US with the, with this trend yes well and I think too the packaging you know I think the 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 amount of time that's spent on, on packaging in the vehicle. So even though something's small, you still have a lot of interior room. Yeah. Uh, you can still get um, have the kind of versatility and functionality you need. Uh, so I think there's so much detail being paid to that that it, it makes it easier for customers to accept. Plus the fuel economy, once it started getting up to three and four dollars a gallon, people yeah. just kind of started thinking so, it's going to stay there. So great design and great engineering. That's what yes. puts the whole package together. Yes. yes. So this car is based on what the Mazda three, or or it's like completely new structure, or what is it? It's 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 kind of oh, it's based off the Mazda two, okay. But there's quite a bit of differentiation. So the basic platform is the Mazda two, but there's been a lot of you know changes and adjustments to that platform. So that but that's the base platform. Okay, and uh, what what do we have in terms of uh, engine? Where engine is? is the two liter Skyactiv G. It's 146 horsepower and 146 foot pounds of torque. So we more than enough because it's a pretty light car. Yes, this car's uh, front wheel drive is 22,809 pounds. So it's, yeah. it's, it's quite a bit lighter. The CX-5 is probably close to almost 600 pounds heavier. So yeah, the, the engine dr it really does, uh, especially mated with this six-speed automatic transmission, it really, really is a pretty quick car yeah. for a two-liter. And you mentioned uh, front wheel drive, so you have the all-wheel drive op uh, option. Option, yeah. Front wheel drive is standard across the board, but all-wheel drive is available on every single trim that we have. And it's not just like a regular all-wheel drive system, it's like a pretty intelligent system, right? We actually call it a predictive, uh, it's the iActive is what it's actually branded as, but it's a very intelligent system. We've taken all the different sensors that are already in the car and utilized those sensors to help feed information to the all-wheel drive system. So it's, when we say predictive, it, it, it's based on so many different, um, whether it's temperature, the amount of uh, steering angle, based on the amount of traction your wheels are getting, uh, it don't knows where your windshield wipers are on. Even so the windshield wipers? It detects the windshield wipers. That wow. way it can tell if it's snowing. It, 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 what basically what's feeding to the car is, if the wipers are on, it's probably either snowing or it's raining. raining. So yeah. it's giving wow. it the sense that there's there's inclement weather. Uh, and then the temperature gauge, it just that's so us. Okay, if it's cold and the wipers are on, it's snowing or it's raining. So, Oh, kind of things a, lot of, a lot of, I mean, like a lot of computing power to do that, huh? Yeah, and it, so it puts a lot of, so it almost makes an instantaneous decision when you hit, say, you lose a little bit of traction, it can kind of predict that that's going to happen. It can, you can tell if you're starting to go downhill or uphill, it can tell if you're starting to turn. So I think there's probably like 11 or 12 different sensors that are constantly monitoring kind of the conditions. It's amazing what cars can do nowadays. It is, it is amazing. <laughs> and what it's amazing also is like the price point of this car. This car, I mean, you probably gonna, I want to ask you to mm -hmm. tell me like uh, the price range, but like from what I heard, like the amount of technology that is available in this car, the price point, it's like something that you probably wouldn't have seen it in a car like this, like just like a couple, five years ago, right? Especially, well, the technology side, you wouldn't have seen five years ago. You would not have seen the technology in this, in, in, not just in this class of car, but you still, to this day, you don't see some of the technology in more expensive cars that we have in this car when it comes to, and that's again on one of our packages that's available on the higher trim. But uh, yeah, some of the safety features we have in this car are, are pretty amazing when you when you think about this is a subcompact yeah. you know, CV. So this car, uh, again, is based on the Mazda 2, and it's a little bit smaller than the um, 
CX-5? Yes. I try to remember all my numbers yes. and letters yes. together. I have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not just like a car that you shrunk it and make it a little bit smaller. It's like a no. complete new design. Right? It's a complete new design. The CX-5, uh, it had its, its, its towards kind of that mid-size or sub, that compact CUV buyer. When we did the CX-3, we actually talked to customers and kind of got the values and, and that they were looking for. It's kind of the wants and needs. And that's where we actually went, you know, it'd be great to have our design designers here, but they we, we they took it to that extra kind of level because yeah. it's a little bit, it built a younger buyer than you'll see with the CX-5. People that have it a little bit more, um, they, they status, not status, but more, they, they like self-expression. Yeah. So the design is very important. So we're able to take the code of design and become a little bit more aggressive with it. And then the interior, interior is, on this car is amazing. And it's a little more- Very high, kind of high quality. Very high, super high quality. And then it's got some kind of cool, unique, edgy kind of, you know, treatments to it that maybe on the CX-5 it doesn't wouldn't work as well because it's a little bit more, a little older, a little bit, uh, yeah. you know, a little bit more established buyer versus young and kind of hip. This is almost like a sports car in a way. I mean, like the shape of it, like when you see it from far away, it looks like a coupe, uh, like very, very sporty. Yeah? It's very, you know, it's got a great exterior design. It People still kind of associate with being a crossover vehicle. Yeah. But there's just, they don't put it into the same camp as some of the more, uh, I guess, kind of mom mobile CUV. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a very stylish, some people would almost equate it to almost having a, 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 a little bit of a coupe-like look to it. But they do have a tendency to say it looks more to be part of a CX-5 family. Family, yeah. yes. So um, also, I mean, it's like a coupe, but also because of the utility, when you put that those seats down, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of space back there. It's almost like a hatchback. Too. Yeah, we, yeah, it does, and that's something we talked about. It has the versatility of a hatchback. Um, but then it also, what well, the great thing is, is it does have that all-wheel drive availability. Um, it does sit up higher than most of your hatchbacks, so you get the better visibility, which is really important to a lot of the people. Yeah. And just because there's you know so much traffic, a lot of high speed, just being able to see what's going on in front of you is very, very important to a lot of people, whereas a, a true uh, coupe or hatchback is going to sit lower on, on the roads. But. So let's talk about, uh, you said the different trims, different levels and packaging. What, what are the prices and what's the price range and all that? Well, the price, the Sport starts under 20000 at 19960 and It's a very, very well-equipped car. It's not like it's a, it's not a uh, stripper car to just get you in. It's actually very, very well-equipped with alloy wheels. It has the 7-inch uh, color touch screen. It's got a rear camera. It's got the Mazda. Uh, uh, the screen and the camera are standard. I understand in every level. Yes, yes, they're standard on every level. And that's again with the in, even the Mazda Connect, which is our, yeah. And that's really key because again, the young buyers they need to be they love to be connected to their car. We have the HMI Commander that you see here is standard on all of our cars. Uh, the air conditioning, power windows and door locks, push button start standard. So you're getting a very very well equipped car for for under twenty thousand. As you move up to the the touring model. That's where you start to see treatments like you have on the interior here, the red, uh -huh. the red pads here on the uh, the knee pads, the red touch touches here on the door handles. Um, so the the touring adds feature content, but it also has a little bit of a we call it a, a design theme. So there's some really nice interior touches to the car that kind of takes the the you go from a sport and you step up with a little bit more premium look and feel to the touring. It's just not some added features, but then when you do step up, the seating or the seats are real nice. You get the leatherette with cloth inserts, yeah. and then you get heated seats. That's where you get a couple of my favorite features, where the blind spot monitor and the rear cross traffic alert. Uh, you also get the, um, uh, let me think here. Uh, sunroof? No, you have a sunroof package on the, oh, on okay. the touring grade. Um, but that's kind of, the you know, we do get the leather rep steering wheel and shift knob, um, and that's pretty much on the, on the touring, those are the things you move. Those are the major things that you get when you move. So the oh, price okay. range around twenty to what's the highest? Uh, the highest just base trim is the GT is twenty four nine ninety. That's the base price of it. On top of that, you'd go up twelve fifty across the board for all wheel drive on every single okay. trim. Um, the, the highest you'll go with a GT is just around I think it's around twenty eight. And that's with an iActive Sense package, which includes Mazda Radar Cruise, the crash mitigation systems like Smart City Brake Support, Smart Brake Support, Lane Departure Warning, and Mazda Radar Cruise Control, which you don't find Radar Cruise Control uh, even on a lot of a lot higher price cars than you put on this. So, but that's all. So uh, this screen is part of the standard package for every single car, right? Yes, this is our seven-inch color touchscreen, and with that, you also 
get the reverse camera integrated into that. Yes, when you, uh, as soon as you would were to stop and put it in reverse, you would get the camera image. Is. And you got the, the lines are great in this because it's so easy to back up because you've got those, the gauge, when you get starting into the red, you know you're getting close to someone. So it's really handy and easy to use. And also we have these, uh, how do you call it? The active heads, up, uh, heads up display. We actually call it the active driving display. Okay. It's a, it's a pop-up uh, heads up display is what we call it. And that's going to display your things like your um, your speed, the navigation will show your directions. And then if there's any of your safety warnings, say you're in lane departure warning that you drift out of the lane, it's going to a little image show of the car is going to pop up and show. There's going to be a, a chime, but it's also going to show you a little car kind of leaving the lane. Okay. So talking about the materials, I mean, even just like the steering wheel, like the, the, the feel that you you get in it's like really strong, like really good looking thing, and like right like the, this, the, to the touch. Yeah, on the, on the touring and grand touring, we do have the leather wrap steering wheel. Um, very, very good take a lot of detail attention on the materials here. If even on the on the dash, you can see there's a stitching over the meter hood. It's really, really intricate yeah. for this level of car. And you even see the stitching through this, we call it a decoration panel. And it's a soft material. And it's very, you know, very attractive. It's got the white on the, on the lighter interior car and the dark into the dark. But we even have this on the on, down on the touring trip. And even the attention to the detail on the, on the, uh, the HVAC vents. Very, very high quality material. Soft material on your knee pads. Uh, this is kind of... It's actually the kind of materials and the stitching and the quality that you're going to see actually in a lot of premium cars. So are you going to make any money with this guy? It's a lot for a lot, <laughs> very little money. Yeah, well, we'll make money on him. I mean, we, we <laughs> can't say how much, I guess. No, but I, I don't know, really but know, but yeah. No, no, uh, what I'm saying is like the customer is going to get a lot of value out of the, the money when they get it. great yeah. value on this car, and, and we're really excited. I think they're going to be very, very pleased. Uh, I think they're, it's almost, you're almost shocked by the, the quality and, and the amount of features that you get on this vehicle. Plus, when you mix in the driving, uh, that yeah, it's, it's really like amazing. a really fun car to drive. It drives like a car. It hand drives and has like all Mazdas. Yeah, you know all Mazdas. I mean, that's what we're driven for because you know at Mazda, our, you know our, our mantra is driving matters. Yeah, and and that's it's it's obvious when you get in a vehicle like this, especially when you get a chance to drive. Maybe this week and go out on the on the twisty roads, and, and the confidence-inspiring handling that this car will give you, and, and, and this, the way it feels planned into the road, it, it's it is really amazing because you don't realize you're in a CUV. Yeah. That's that's pretty amazing. I mean, like what you can get now for like that kind of price. I mean, like under thirty, pretty much like oh. everything, right? Yeah, that you won't find that you know out in the marketplace, especially you know you're gonna be hard pressed to find radar crews until you start kind of moving up yeah. into different categories. Now we'll see that stuff eventually maybe come down, but... So uh, as we were saying at the beginning of the, our drive, uh, mm. fast growing segment in the mm -hmm. industry, what does this compete against? What do you see as a competition for this car? Uh, the primary competitors, and first off there's Nissan Juke was kind of the first into the marketplace. They kind of were, they're a little quirky, a little bit different car, but yeah. that's kind of the one. Is it one of those that you hate or you love? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, they kind of get that. Uh, the Chevy Trax just recently came in, and yeah. now we're seeing the, the recent addition. Of, of course the, the elephant kind of in the room is going to be the, the new HRV. And that's because it's a Honda. They do well with the CRV. So just from this, the uh, fact of being a Honda, they're yeah. going to be kind of a big. That's more like a serious thing. car to me. I mean, even though I know it's like more or less the size, but this is like more fun. I mean, it's almost like in a category of its own. Like, yeah, it, it's, much with it really, it really is in a in a category of its own. We just those are the cars that are kind of the same, yeah. same size, same kind of price point. You also have something like the uh, 500X. Is, is, oh yeah, come new, out. New Fiat, yeah, a little bit of, and that's from a you know kind of a that's a little bit more fun design, a little bit you know funkier vehicle. So that from from a design standpoint, closer associated with this. So there's bits and pieces of some of the other cars that you're going to find that that match up with this. But I don't think you're going to find anyone that's got the kind of equipment level, the the price point, the fun to drive factor, and the interior quality on this vehicle is yeah. exceptional. Well, Dan, thank you very much again for your time and information. Yeah, and so welcome. we're coming to the end of the of the drive here. Uh, so I noticed the key just like sitting here. This yes. is some of the other features that you get with the car, like right. keyless on, entry and start. On the uh, Touring and above, you actually get a Mazda Advanced keyless entry and, and start, which you don't have to take the key out of your pocket or purse. On the base car, we do have the remote keyless entry, uh, but it's not the Mazda Smart Key. But the Smart Key is really cool. Again, you can keep it in your pocket or purse, push the button, and get in and out of the car and lock it. Well, I'll do that, and maybe I'll keep the car for the weekend. <laughs> That'd be great. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks.